All right, so we just finished up modeling this part here, but now we're going to take this and we're going to turn it into an assembly. So we're going to add a bunch of parts to this, such as a NEMA 17 motor, an extruder, and a couple of bolts here. I've already modified the files for you, so you can go ahead and download those and just throw them into your project if you want. Otherwise, you will have to have a GrabCAD account and come on over here to download the files and then modify them as you see me do on screen. So whether you just want to watch or you want to go through the whole effort of following along, I'll leave that one up to you. So the first thing that we need to do here is acquire the reference models that we're going to use. And then there's going to be a couple of file downloads that we're going to have. And essentially, once you have those downloaded, we're going to go ahead and upload them right here. So for example, I have a motor and I'm going to click upload. And that's how this is going to find its way into our database here. However, acquiring these models requires a little bit of attention here because there are some pitfalls that you can run into. Well, first and foremost, we actually need to find the reference models in the first place, which means we need good information. So for example here, we're working with a Bontech extruder or one that is just like it. So to find information here, I've gone to the manufacturer. And unfortunately, even though I, they do have some data sheets here, you can actually go in here and start to look at this. They don't give you any place to actually download a model, um, but they do give you some sort of dimensions to work from. So you can either try to remodel this based on these pictures here, or you can try to navigate to a place where there might be a, a file to download. One good source for this is GrabCAD. A lot of people actually go and throw up some reference models here for this very reason, so that we all don't need to just continuously remodel things based on a couple of pictures. So this one doesn't really contain any of the internals here. It really just contains kind of the important reference bits here, which is going to be these three mounting holes, how big it is, and you get the idea. So with an account here, I can go ahead and hit download on this file, and that will download a zip file, which is the BMG extruder. So what we're looking for inside of here is the step file. Navigate to the upload button right here, and then drag that file into this spot right there, and it's going to start to upload it. You can also upload formats from other CAD systems as well. There's a whole list of things that it can and cannot accept. So now this is going to upload into our system and, and put it into our environment so that we can actually use it. So once that is complete, we can go in here, we can open up this file that we've just uploaded, and there we have it. So if we take a closer look at this file, you can see that inside of here there's several bodies, and as you kind of reveal them, you can kind of see that, yes, this indeed is a very simplified model. There's actually a lot more going on inside of this. So this hopefully is some good reference data. But the thing is that before we go and actually use this in a design, it's a very good idea to kind of check it just to make sure that it is correct. So to do that, we're going to be using the inspect tool right here. So this is the little tape measure. First thing I want to see here is, does this fit our bolt hole pattern? So if I click on that edge right there for that circle and that edge for that circle, we can see over here that the distance between the center of these holes is 31 millimeters. So that's correct. Now this documentation doesn't actually show that there, but I know that it pairs up with the NEMA 17 motor. so. That's good. Let's see here, 23 millimeters from that to the center and 33 overall. Let's see if those are line up. So if we go to the top view here, I'm looking for 23 millimeters from here to here. And you see that the distance here is 23.75. So it's close, but it's not exactly right. And then if we measure from this face to this face, that's 34 millimeters. And our documentation was looking for 33 millimeters. So you can see here that this reference model that we downloaded is close, but it's not 100% accurate. So then we have to ask the question, is this accurate enough for our needs? And the answer is yes, I think it is. However, I'm going to run through a quick thing here where I'm going to modify this so that it is a little bit more accurate here. The most important one is from this face to the center of our filament. Um, because if you try to line this up in the real world and it ends up off center, well, then that can cause you some problems. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hide all of this stuff here, this part, this part, and just kind of focus in on the faces here. So that's one face that's going to move inside of here is another face. And then there's another one, another one, another one. And I think there's going to be one more face back here. All I'm doing is holding control and hold down left click. And that opens up that little window dialog um, to see behind there. So 
That's how I was able to click on that. These two are also going to move. So I've, I've selected a ton of faces right here. And then I'm going to click the move command and we're just going to go and use the translate tool over here. So at this point, I can actually move these faces. So we're going to move this minus 0.75 millimeters. So if I measure this from here to here, it's now 23 millimeters. So if I turn these bodies back on, we should see that the holes are not centered. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select this body and the other body here, and then click the Move Copy Tool. And I'm going to translate this minus 0.75 millimeters and click Enter. So now that that is actually all lined up. Now you can see that this, <laughs> this face here is also not correct, so I'm going to move that one as well, even though I don't think it will be used for anything. So there we go. Finally, since this is one millimeter too high, I'm going to select all of these faces up here. I'm going to go into the Move Copy tool, and I'm going to move this minus one millimeter. I'm also not worried about this and this being two different parts, so I'm going to make that nice and compact. We're just going to combine this and that. So now that is one complete body. And then that kind of completes our little modification here to give us a reference model that's going to be fairly accurate for what we're doing. I would say the things that are actually missing from this model here is there's actually a clip that goes around here. And this would have another one of these on the bottom because we're not actually running a direct drive system here. We're actually running a Bowden tube. All right, so next up is acquiring our NEMA 17 motor. Now, there's a ton of places to download references for NEMA 17 models. But let me just run you through some of the steps because there's actually some really important bits that we can learn from. So the motor that I'm looking at right now is from Stepper Online. Now, the reason I'm looking at these guys is because they're a reputable source for NEMA 17 motors. As you can imagine, NEMA 17 actually stands for a whole standard of how these bolt holes uh, and flange and everything there actually works. It goes a little bit beyond that. If you really want to jump into it, there's a whole standard documentation that is literally 187 pages long. Case in point, you do actually get to the point where we're talking about how this motor is dimensionally supposed to be and how it actually mounts up and all the different specs that go into this standard. But for the most part, what I find is most useful for me and in the end use of these motors is to actually go to a reputable source of somebody that I might actually buy these motors from and then look right down in their description or specifications and there you will hopefully find a data sheet just like we have right here. So if we click on this, we can see the data sheet for this motor and you can see that the model number is right here and this gives us a lot of important information such as the bolt pattern that we have to match up right here and some of the other dimensions like how long this shaft is and other things like that. However, what they don't provide you here is a reference model. So knowing that we either have to convert that drawing into a model by kind of reading off the dimensions, or we can usually skip a step by going to a place like GrabCAD. So inside of here, you can go to the library and we're going to search NEMA 17. And then it will give us a history of all time. And I usually like to go down here and go to most liked. It usually gives us a pretty good source of information. And the first one that I see right over here is NEMA 17 motor shaft. We can jump into this one. And this gives us a variety of different motors right here. So you can download that and you'll get a whole zip file. And once again, we go through there and find one and upload it into Fusion 360, which is what I've done right here. So this is the model that I downloaded. So now we have a good looking model, but is it dimensionally accurate? Well, let's go back to our data sheet here, pull out the important dimensions and see if they line up. Okay, so I'm going to use my inspect tool here and just run through the critical dimensions very, very quickly. So clicking on the edge here to the edge, there's a good way to get bolt to, um, hole to hole. So that right there is 31 millimeters, uh, which is nice and accurate. I click out into space to kind of clear my selection and then move on from there. So. The center is 22 millimeters, that's accurate. Face to face is two millimeters, again, that is accurate. The length of this shaft from here back to that face should be 20 millimeters, and what we see here is it's 24.2, so that is not accurate. The overall length of this motor 
is 27.4 millimeters versus the one that I'm looking at, which is 20.5. So that is not accurate. I also noticed that this shaft has no flat on it, which is something that is included with the stepper online motor. So in the next lesson, I'm going to modify this motor so it's accurate. But the most important thing I really want you to take away from this is to always verify your model. I can tell you that no matter where you get your model from, there's always a chance that it's not quite accurate. And sometimes there could be a pretty big difference and that could really cause you some problems down the road. If you're going to download, download and verify.